In 1978, Gary Heidnick bought a three-story house in Philadelphia. To his neighbors, he seemed eccentric but harmless. They didn't yet know what horrors would unfold in the basement of 3520 North Marshall Street. Sarah Johnson, a 23-year-old social worker, disappeared on November 25, 1986. Her family reported her missing, but police had few leads. Without knowing it, Sarah was chained in Heidnick's basement, the first of his victims. Over the next four months, Heidnick kidnapped five more women. He kept them in a hole he dug in the floor of his basement and covered them with a heavy piece of plywood. The women were subjected to unspeakable torture, both physical and psychological. One victim, Lisa Thomas, recalled, the smell was unbearable. We were forced to use a bucket as a toilet and he rarely emptied it. The darkness was overpowering, broken only by the fact that he would come downstairs with that perverted smile on his face. For months, Heidnick's house of horrors went unnoticed. He manipulated his captives, sometimes allowing one of them to help him upstairs, creating a hierarchy among them. Such tactics kept them from uniting against him. On a cold February night, Heidnick decided to punish Deborah Dudley. He filled a hole with water and used an electrical cord to electrocute her. The other women watched in horror as Deborah's body convulsed and then fell silent. The next day, Heidnick had the two women help him dispose of Deborah's body. They drove to a remote area of New Jersey where he unceremoniously dumped her remains. As the weeks passed, the women's hope faded. They were starved, beaten, and repeatedly raped. Heidnick even pulverized the flesh of one of his dead victims and put it in the other women's food. But salvation came from an unexpected source. Josefina Rivera, who had been held captive the longest, gained Heidnick's trust. On March 24, 1987, he allowed her to visit her family briefly. Josefina seized the opportunity and contacted the police. When police officers arrived at 3520 North Marshall Street, they were not prepared for what they found. The stench from the basement was overwhelming. As they descended the stairs, their flashlights highlighted a scene straight out of a nightmare. Three women, emaciated and terrified, were chained in a pit. They squinted against the sudden light, their eyes wild with fear and disbelief. The officers, hardened by years of police service, were visibly shaken. One of the detectives later said, in all my years, I've never seen anything like it. It seemed like we had walked into hell itself. The survivors were rushed to the hospital and Heidnick was arrested. The ensuing trial shocked the entire country. Heidnick's defense tried to make him look crazy, but the jury saw through the ruse. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. On July 6, 1999, Gary Heidnick was executed by lethal injection. His last words were, I ask God to forgive me. I ask my family to forgive me. I ask everyone to forgive me. But forgiveness came hard for those whose lives he changed forever. Sarah Johnson, the first victim, struggled to get her life back to normal. Every time I close my eyes, I'm back in that pit, she said in a rare interview years later. The darkness, the smell, the fear, it never leaves you. Lisa Thomas turned her trauma into advocacy, working with organizations that support victims of violent crime. If my story helps even one person, then maybe something good will come out of this horror, she often says during speaking engagements. Josefina Rivera, whose bravery led to their rescue, struggled with victim guilt for years. Why me? She asked. Why was I the one who got out to save the others? I don't feel like a hero. I just did what I had to do to survive. The house at 3520 North Marshall Street still stands, a silent testament to the atrocities that took place within its walls. Neighbors say they sometimes hear screams late at night, though the house has long been vacant. The events that took place in Heidnick's basement serve as a reminder of the evil that can lurk behind ordinary facades. They force us to face the disturbing truth that monsters don't always hide under beds or in closets. Sometimes they live next door. 
As for the survivors, they continue to grapple with their past. Every year on the anniversary of their rescue, they come together to reminisce, cry, and celebrate their survival. We are bonded for life, Lisa Thomas once said, not just by what we've been through, but by our determination to live, to thrive, no matter what. Their story, as horrific as it was, is also an example of incredible resilience. It reminds us that even in the darkest of places, hope can persist, and that sometimes the scariest stories are not the ones writers make up, but the ones that unfold in reality, in quiet homes on ordinary streets, where evil takes root and thrives in the shadows. As you walk down your street tonight, past the rows of houses with their warm glowing windows, remember the story of 3520 North Marshall Street. And perhaps, just perhaps, you'll quicken your step and hurry home, suddenly aware of the thin veneer that separates our safe, ordinary world from the potential horrors that lurk just out of sight.